What's up everybody? Today we're going to be taking a look at the GTX 980 Ti and the new Pascal GTX 1070 and we're going to look at how they compare once both of the cards are overclocked. Now you might be going, this GTX 980 Ti is clearly at a disadvantage. I mean it's the older card, it has a reference cooler, and the 1070 here, it's newer, it, it's an aftermarket PCB, it's quite large. Um, if I put these side by side, you need a better comparison. The MSI card is much wider, um, but surprisingly, the 980 Ti is the faster card. Now this 980 Ti here, it does have a custom BIOS on it that um, raises the boost clock and base clock without overclocking and adjusts the power trim levels. And I was able to get this card to 1550, but for the purposes of these benches, I lowered it to 1525 and it was still able to beat the 1070. Now, even before I did that, though, this card was able to hit about 1,500, but it wasn't completely stable in games, so that didn't make a huge difference here. And I will give credit to the 1070 here. It, it draws far less power. With this 980 Ti overclocked, we're looking at up to 425 watts of max power draw. I haven't measured that in games to see what it's actually drawing, but it could potentially draw up to that much. The, uh, the 1070, on the other hand, is much more efficient. And this card here, I was only able to get it up to uh, 2,025 megahertz, which for a Pascal card, from what I've seen online, is kind of typical. Um, and that's mainly due to uh, being voltage restricted. I can only run about 1.09 volts to this card. And now I don't know if unlocking that voltage would help any. I think a lot of people thought that with the Furies, I had a Fury. Uh, way back when, and once voltage control was released, that didn't do a whole lot except increase the power draw. So, moving on to the benchmarks now. Starting with 3D Mark, the 980 Ti here scored 20,912 points for the graphic score, uh, Fire Strike 1080p, whereas the 1070 scored 19,237, and that's an 8.7% increase. Um, and just for comparison here, my friend who has a UGA 1080 super clock also ran the test and scored 22,222 for graphics. Now, that's a 6.2% increase over the 980 Ti, making this 980 Ti score closer to the 1080 than to the 1070. Now, his 1080 wasn't overclocked by him. It's the EVGA super clock model, and that boosts to about 1950 on its own. I think maybe a little bit higher. I don't remember the exact number. Moving on to DirectX 12. This is where the 1070 starts to kind of shine, and the Pascal architecture really sort of pulls through for it. Uh, the 1070 did get a higher score. The graphics score in times 5 was 6,310 compared to 6,073 from 980Ti. That makes it 3.9% faster, which isn't a whole lot to be honest, but it is faster nonetheless, so I will give credit where credit is due. Now moving on to the gaming benchmarks, these are going to be done at 4K because I game on my 4K TV. And first up we have Metro 2033, the GTX 1070 here scored 53.49 frames per second compared to the GTX 980Ti's 52.58. So the 1070 just barely squeaked by there, not a huge difference. I'm not going to bother calculating the difference percentage-wise. Um, both cards basically playable. That was at max or ultra settings. All of these games that I'm running here are going to be at the highest preset. So that's pretty playable. If you drop a couple settings down, they would hit 60. Now moving on to Rise of the Tomb Raider. I benched this game in both the DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 modes. And in DirectX 11, the 980 Ti had a 12% lead, and you can see the frame rates there. I was pretty impressed by this, especially since that game will max out the VRAM on this card. That being said, in actual gameplay, the 1070 is definitely preferable, because when the game maxes out the VRAM on the 980 Ti, I noticed that it stutters a lot, and at times can almost be unplayable. So I would probably, if I were to go through and do another playthrough of this game, I would drop the settings on the 980 Ti. Moving on to DirectX 12, the 980 Ti surprisingly held the lead. I wasn't expecting this, but it had a 10% lead in DirectX 12 as well, so the 1070 caught up a little bit with the newer API, however it still wasn't enough to dethrone the 980 Ti. Moving on, we have Bioshock Infinite. 
Here again, the GTX 1070 took the lead, averaging 96.22 frames per second, whereas the 980 averaged 91.99. So there we have a 4.5% lead, which is impressive, however insignificant. And the last game I tested is the original Tomb Raider from 2013. Here, the 980 Ti took the lead again, um, boasting the 1070 by about 8%, averaging 56.3 FPS compared to 52 from the 1070. Now I know these aren't the newest and the most popular games, but I wanted to bench games that I owned that had built-in benchmarks. Now ideally I would have done games that I played the most, however like I said, a lot of them don't have built-in benchmarks, and for the sake of consistency, I really wanted to use a game that featured a built-in benchmark. Now with that being said, the 980 Ti has my pick. Um, at 4K, um, not both of these cards don't always deliver, deliver 60 FPS, and I think at that point every frame kind of counts. And so I'm going to be sticking with this because in most of the games that I play, even though uh, the benchmarks don't necessarily show this, I definitely noticed that this is the faster card. And when the 1070 did have the lead, I would say it was insignificant, but if you're going out and buying a new card, it doesn't make sense to buy a 980 Ti if you're buying new. However, you can get some great deals on these used, whereas I feel as the 1070 really seems to be holding its value right now. The used ones seem to be costing almost as much as the new ones. I picked this 980 Ti up for 220 bucks a couple months ago, making it a great value. And I've seen lots of other cards on Craigslist for the mid 200 range, whereas the 1070 here, I picked this guy up for 300, but usually they're around the 350 dollar mark. So. Um, when it comes to that, I would definitely choose the 980 Ti over the 1070. It's still a solid gaming card. Uh, DirectX 12 performance will probably be lower, but as we saw in Rise of the Tomb Raider, the 1070 still lost to the 980 Ti in that scenario. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and if you have a 980 Ti, it's certainly not worth it to upgrade to a 1070. Uh, even the 1080, it's kind of questionable up to you, especially if you're okay with overclocking. Personally, I would wait for the 1080 Ti or AMD's Vega to come out and see how those perform. But I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.